five and so excellent we are recording um so nora is going to share her screen and then we are gonna uh, get started okay hold on so, can you see it oh beautiful excellent okay. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Craig, for being here. Thank you, Nora, for all the work you put into this. Um, thank you, everybody who's watching this in, in the recorded version. Um, uh, who we are, we are March on Harrisburg. This is our quarterly donor call. Um, this is the third call like this we've done this year. Um, our goal at the beginning of the year was to start this as something we did four times a year, and uh, we're going to do it. We're going to meet that goal. Um, so we are nonpartisan. We are statewide. We are volunteer driven. Um, we, do not, we do not endorse candidates or parties. Our nonpartisan stance is uh, a really deep conviction of ours. We believe that corruption in the government is not and has never been limited to um, one party or, or one politician. So we really do take that uh, nonpartisan systemic approach. Um, we're statewide. We now have uh, seven chapters across the state um, and we organize everywhere and across all uh, lines of division in, in society. We organize uh, urban, rural, suburban, uh, black, white, uh, uh, Hispanic people of color. Um, uh, we organize across the lines of division because we do believe that we have to build a statewide moral fusion movement to win the democracy that, that we need. Um, and we are, of course, especially active in the districts of legislative leaders uh, so that um, yeah, really seen a lot of interesting parts of Pennsylvania. Um, we are volunteer driven uh, and welcome Carol. Thank you for following the, the Zoom uh, links here. Sorry about that mix up, <laughs> good to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, uh, I'm just gonna be given a presentation for a few minutes and then open it up to discussion and Q&A. Um, but thank you very much for, for joining. Uh, so this is just a brief overview of who we are again. Um, we're also volunteer driven. We currently have two full-time staff, uh, one part-time staff and one um, uh, contractor. Uh, and we are driven by our volunteer chapter leaders and, and our working groups. And I should say, Nora, you, you are the contractor um, on at $10,000 a year. Uh, and then we have our board, um, which is now uh, has met twice officially and is at uh, 12 people. And it's a very solid board. Um, so what we do, uh, we do a whole, whole lot. Um, it kind of boils down to these five points here. Uh, one thing we do is uh, community powered lobbying. Um, we just had a very busy spring. We were in the Capitol uh, every session week and most session days. Um, we go from office to office. We schedule uh, a whole lot of meetings. Um, I think we had 92 meetings on the calendar this spring. And that doesn't include, of course, all the drop-ins and all the hovering going from one office back to the other to a staffer's office to the you know print room to just being everywhere in the Capitol. Um, we would have uh, about two to eight volunteers, depending on the day, with us in the Capitol, um, and we are definitely an established presence in that building. Uh, we march. Um, I cannot wait to be marching again. Uh, we haven't marched since spring of 2019. Um, and we're going to be marching from York to Harrisburg as soon as the plague uh, ends. And we're hopeful that that'll be the spring. And we do a whole lot of nonviolent direct actions, of course. Um, we just had a round of actions in June uh, that um, uh, picked a fight with the Senate president. Um, he is the last uh, standing obstruction on the gift ban campaign. Um, so we, we put some pressure on him and that campaign has continued into the summer. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, we do a whole lot of education. Uh, our, our goal is to, to build the democracy movement that, that we need to win. And, um, uh, and we need to build up the movement and that includes education and leadership development. Um, we work to develop leaders that are clear, competent, uh, committed and connected to the movement. Um, Debbie, good to see you. Thank you for following the Zoom link breadcrumbs there. Uh, sorry about the tech difficulties. Um, Craig, I think you've heard me make this joke twice now, but uh, we're going to figure out Zoom by the end of the next pandemic, I swear. We're going <laughs> to get this. Um, and so we're just talking a little bit about what we do, and uh, I'm going to open it up for discussion in, in a few minutes here. just want to give a, a, some updates on, on where we are. Um, so we, we do all of these things uh, because we have a, a broad platform that we need to, to pass. Um, so we have our, our money out people in platform. Uh, Nora, can I ask the next slide, please? Um, we have a lot of work to do. 
Pennsylvania, as, as we all know, is one of the most corrupt states in the country, and uh, we have 23 policies that we need to pass in order to build a functioning democracy here in Pennsylvania. Um, so this is the money out section of our platform. Uh, as you see, there's things on there like the gift ban that we talk about a lot right now. There's things like democracy dollars and public campaign financing that we're building toward. Um, and then there's things that we're kind of always looking for ways to slip into the conversation, like side jobs and um, uh, taking on per diems, things that we can try to slip into quiet, more quiet bills. Um, and then there's uh, the really, really big things that we're also pushing toward that are much longer campaigns. Um, or can you go to the, the next one here? It has a few of them. Uh, this is our people in uh, part of the platform. Um, I think the hardest thing on our agenda is that top one right there, getting a ballot initiative process in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's very hard to convince the legislators to give up their Steelers tickets. It's even harder to convince them to give up their uh, sole power to legislate. So that's going to be the biggest fight on, on, our, uh, on our agenda. Um, but we're building to it. And of course, uh, uh, next slide. Um, we uh, have chosen to focus on these uh, first five priorities um, for this year. Uh, these are the ones that we zoomed in on. And the whole platform and, and these priorities and the specific approach, uh, the goal is really um, to, to, to break the political machine, to, to completely reconstruct the political machine in a way that is oriented toward people and, and not toward money. And that this agenda would get us there. Our platform would, would get us to that point. Um, I heard a, a great quote that I just want to share with you all of um, describing how the system works and the system that, that we're trying to dismantle. Uh, this is a quote from a guy named Boise Penrose, who was the uh, Pennsylvania political boss extraordinaire around the turn of the century. Um, he was a, a U.S. congressman, um, but he was also the chair of the uh, state Republican Party, and, and he ran the state. He, he really ran uh, the, the monopolies that they had over um, basically every institution in Harrisburg for decades. And he sat down with Andrew Carnegie, and he spelled it out to Carnegie what their graft was, what, the, what their system was that they were operating. And he said, I believe in the division of labor. You send us to Congress. We pass laws under which you make money, and out of the, your profits, you further contribute to our campaign funds to send us back again to pass more laws to enable you to make more money. Penrose was clearly, it was just stating the obvious to Carnegie, give us some of your money, send us to DC, we'll pass laws, they will make you more money, use some of that money to send us back to DC, and we'll just keep it going and going and going. And that's kind of the system that, that we're out to, to dismantle, um, that system where it always leans toward the money, follows the green, and uh, the people get forgotten along the way. Um, we're going for a government of by for the people. So these uh, first five priorities here for this year, um, I just want to give brief updates on each one. Uh, first, um, democracy dollars. So we are in the bill crafting process with a few legislative offices right now, um, working with Senator Muth, who's the Democratic Policy Chair on the Senate side, and um, uh, Representative Scott Conklin, who is the, uh, the new House State Government um, Democratic Chair. So we have two well-positioned legislators who, who are working with our offices to craft a bill. Um, it's been a, a real joy working with our, our interns on that, as well as um, some national democracy groups that have been very helpful, like the Democracy Policy Network. Uh, the gift ban, this one's a, a bit of a wild ride um, this, this year. It's been, it's, it's been a lot of ups and downs on this one. Uh, so what we thought we knew, I'm just going to give you a timeline. Um, we thought back in March that Senate and House leadership had come together, struck a deal, produced a gift ban bill, that was House Bill 1009. Senate leadership then told us, Senator Corman, the Senate president, told us that he actually hadn't agreed to that deal. We're not sure if there ever even was a deal. If he's lying to us, we, we really don't know. Um, but if there was a deal, it fell through, and there's a possibility that there never even was a deal. Um, the Speaker of the House doesn't think there was a deal. He doesn't remember there being a deal, but it could have also been formed without him in the room uh, for that one. So we're, we're still not 100% sure what happened, but the uh, everybody is on board with the gift ban except for the Senate president. 
And so that's why our pressure campaigns have been going after Jay Corman since, uh, since May. And we're, we've been able to push him. Um, he's starting to introduce some pretty weak ethics legislation. He's trying to kind of give himself a good name, take some pressure off of him um, around the gift ban. Uh, but we are we are staying on him. Um, we are expecting to pass the the bill through the House this fall. Uh, the House committee is is on board and enthusiastic. They just wasted their time with voter suppression nonsense though and, and ran out of time. Um, and then we have the pathway through the rest of the House cleared. Uh, and then on the Senate side, it's it's everybody but the Senate president is committed and on board. Um, so we are uh, hopeful for the gift ban. Um, with ranked choice voting, also, if anybody has questions, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Uh, with ranked choice voting, um, that grassroots campaign is off the ground. Uh, we've had our, our working groups have been meeting for a few months now. Um, we've started to do public facing events. Uh, this Saturday is the first ti cutest, tiniest dog election in Harrisburg. Um, they are going to vote on what is which dog is the cutest, tiniest. These are strange to me, cutest is very subjective, tiniest is very objective, it's, you can measure tiniest. Um, but somehow or another, this is going to be an election and they're going to use ranked choice voting and there's a very cool way to do it through your phone, it's going to be at a park, it should be a really fun time. Um, then next week there's a, a wine and chocolate tasting, I'm sorry, wine and chocolate election in the Lehigh Valley. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing beer, beer elections as well really just these public facing fun events to engage people, teach them about ranked choice voting and have them use it so that they can uh, intuitively understand it. Um, we're really following the main playbook on this a good bit. Uh, Maine uh, used a lot of these beer tastings. That was their primary outreach tactic. Uh, we're also borrowing a lot from the Massachusetts campaign, um, which relied on a speaker's bureau. So we're also training up a speaker's bureau right now that's going to be going across the state and, and just doing so, so many presentations. Um, a lot of presentations to every Elks Club, to every, every synagogue, everybody. Uh, and uh, the bill itself, um, we're in talks, uh, we're, we're really trying to form a very strong bill introduction with ranked choice voting to give it a really bipartisan um, reputation from the get-go and, and we're having good success. Uh, we actually just yesterday met with a, a legislative staffer who's going to be really cementing a relationship between um, Senator Laughlin, who's a Republican out in Erie, and Senator Williams from uh, Philadelphia. And they're going to be our, our bipartisan special pair for that. Um, and on the policy front, I can talk for hours about that because I just was I did a deep dive this week on that one. Um, but we're going to be following the Utah method uh, for ranked choice voting, where it's a very locally decided um, no pressure from the state way to, to enter into ranked choice voting. That's had a lot of success out in Utah. Uh, where they're now using it in 23 cities. Um, maintain, strengthen, and expand vote by mail. Uh, we, we, we tried. Um, this one's really hard right now. There's a lot of national factors that make this one really hard. Um, we, we were in the Capitol really trying to keep the conversations factual, um, trying to keep them informed, trying to keep them productive. Uh, we were somewhat successful at being able to slip in some of our ideas into the conversation. Um, you know, early voting showed up in uh, Seth Grove's bill, which was in its totality a voter suppression bill, but, you know, we were able to have some conversations with that committee and really boost early voting and it, it snuck its way in as one of the good things in a, what is a terrible bill that the governor vetoed. Um, so we're, we're just really trying to just be a consistent presence in this conversation and really just grow. We always, the line our lobbyists use nonstop is, um, why are we talking about what we don't agree on? Let's talk about what we do agree on. And, you know, let, that's early voting or that's uh, same day registration or things that are actually good. Um, right now, it's it's a voting rights is caught in a game of chicken between the state house, uh, house state government committee and the governor. Um, we'll see how it resolves itself. Uh, it's possible that just nothing will happen and it's possible that we'll get a compromise bill in the fall. Um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, and then preventing judicial gerrymandering, we won. Um, that one's a, a, a solid win. Uh, it's not completely over yet. It could come back, but the, um, the House GOP caucus does not have the votes internally to make this happen. And uh, it's unlikely that they're gonna get any of those votes back. So we're feeling really good that we prevented um, a very stupid and blatant power grab this year. Um, there's about three every year or so, and, and this one we 
we got it. <laughs> we did it. So um, excellent. And I just wanted to talk about some other current happenings, uh, just some things that that we're doing. Um, interns, it's summer, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we had three interns this year. Um, two of them were NYU grad students. One of them was an undergrad uh, who's from uh, Swarthmore. And they were great. Uh, they did a lot of policy work for us. They did, um, uh, they learned a lot of organizing skills. They really, two of them really wanted to pick up how to, you know, how does a movement work? How does a nonprofit work? So they got a lot of that information as well. Um, they helped out a lot with uh, the school. Let's transition into that project. Uh, we're building a school. Um, we have a lot of trainings that we've been doing over the years. They keep building, they keep growing, we keep learning. And it's gotten to the point where we need to institutionalize this. We, we need to, to build an actual structure that contains all of our trainings and that has uh, tracks and curriculum built into it and something that's replicable, something that can be taught by, by any teacher, you know, that we can train our own people to, to become trainers. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's been a great project. It's a massive project. Um, we've had uh, Beth and I, uh, who are the two full-time staff people, we've both been working on it. Interns have been working on it. Volunteers have been plugging in. Um, the legislative team's taken on a lot of it. Uh, but we really needed to uh, formalize our process of, of teaching our tactics, teaching organizing, um, you know, practice and organizing theory, teaching about nonviolence and, and you know, why we do direct actions and how to plan them. Um, there's a lot of civics education in, in our school, kind of uh, a standalone civics section, but it's also woven throughout a good bit um, because we're, we need to develop leaders and leaders need to go to school. We got to train, um, we need to, to build a movement. Um, chapter development, we're, we're growing. Uh, we're gonna be doing a chapter leader training next month for um, the Lebanon Lancaster chapter. So we're, we're developing a chapter. Uh, this is in the Speaker of the House's district and um, uh, the chapter leader there, the uh, one of the two chapter leaders is, um, uh, very close with the speaker already so we're, we're very happy that we're developing this chapter and it's going to have a, a lot of room to grow um so we'll be up to eight chapters uh soon um research partnerships have been a lot of fun uh we've partnered now with um, boston college law school uh the uh, university of pennsylvania law school um, democracy law project uh, and we've uh, uh ranked the vote fair vote um and just a whole lot of these democracy groups that have really, uh, um, some of them have reached out to us, we've reached out to some of them, um, but it's been really, really great to just keep having those, those national uh, experts to, to weigh in and help guide us, especially on the policy front. Um, so our research cap capacity keeps growing and, and um, yeah, yeah, uh, there's, there's, there's a group for every issue and it's great. Uh, it's, it's really, really helpful. Um, <laughs> Uh, then on social media, I just felt like I should mention that um, uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, we're, we're on TikTok now. Uh, so that, that has happened. We are officially on TikTok. Uh, so if anybody wants to follow us, um, please do. I'm, I'm not even sure how TikTok works. To, so I shouldn't say more about how to follow us. It's possible to follow us, I should say. Um, and we can now <laughs> uh, fundraise through Facebook as well. Um, so how Facebook does the nonprofit donations, uh, that was a, a really long fight for us just to wade through how Facebook handles political content now. Um, but yeah, th those are things. And uh, I've been told by people who are cooler than me that uh, our content has been, has been really good. Um, and I'll, I believe them. So uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, our fundraising goals. So this is a donor call. Uh, so this is um, really, you know, the purpose is to give updates and then talk about our, our fundraising data uh, and, and answer any questions. Um, so in 2021, uh, we have raised $131,187.50. Uh, um, so we are, we're doing well. Uh, as of today, we have $117,000, I'm sorry, $117,022.60 in the bank. Um, so we have uh, a good amount of cash on hand because uh, we're about to uh, grow in, in, in a, a 
we're about to double in size, hopefully our staff. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, the, the goal is to raise an additional uh, 68,000 uh, plus dollars in 2021. Um, we wanna reach our, our goal that we set at the beginning of the year of $200,000. Uh, and the goal is to hire one new full-time organizer and one uh, new full-time project manager, and then be in a good position to further expand in 2022. Um, we have uh, so much work to do. Uh, so that 131,000 plus that we've raised this year, um, some of it has come from uh, foundations we've broken through in the foundation world. Um, Bread and Roses Foundation and the Ben and Jerry's Foundation have both given us grants. Uh, and then we have um, pretty good pending applications right now with uh, Ben and Jerry's again and then the, the Piper Fund. Um, uh, just some more fundraising stats uh, uh, between, um, I'm sorry, so for our, our uh, mostly recurring monthly donations, we're averaging about $2,700 a month uh, coming in um, almost automatically through that. Uh, the most commonly donated amount is $10. Um, and then the, the big chunk of change we got this year was from um, the Scranton donor, this is what we call this person who gave $100,000. So that was a, a very helpful contribution. Um, and we call this person the Scran donor just because we only know their go-between. We don't actually know who this person is, which is strange. Uh, the biggest expenses are, are me at $42,000 a year. Uh, Rachel is on at $24,000 a year part-time. And then Beth is on at $42,000 per year. Um, Beth was, was officially hired in early March. Um, Nora, who's, who's on this call, uh, we paid Nora a lump sum of $5,000 uh, for fundraising and grant writing work, and then is, she's going to get another $5,000 at the end of the year, so $10,000 total. Um, those are our major expenses. We don't uh, really spend much on materials. We don't have an office space. Um, we don't really spend much on anything. Um, I think our biggest recurring expense is actually just newspaper subscriptions because we like to just keep an eye on, you know, the Butler Eagle and the Reading Eagle and all of the various Eagle newspapers across the state. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we, we keep costs pretty low. Um, I'm also really happy that uh, at $42,000 a year is our full-time salary for, for Beth and I. Um, we are getting close to, to a living wage there. I think that averages up to like $22 an hour, um, which is above 15 and, and is, is, is good. Uh, the Poor People's Campaign says $24.12 is, is an actual living wage in Pennsylvania right now. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, uh, and I'm sorry, oh, our goal at the bottom there. Uh, we need to raise um, an additional $10,812 to meet our goal. So that, that's, that's what we're looking at um, as far as the, you know, the, the income we still need to find for the rest of the year. Uh, but between the $131,000 we have on hand and then the recurring donations plus the, the two grant applications that are, are very much sure things, well, I shouldn't say that, um, we're looking very good, uh, we should have $58,000 coming in. I say they're sure things. I don't want to sound arrogant here. The Piper Fund, they don't invite you to apply unless they're already going to give it to you. So we met with them like four times and then they sent us an application and told us to apply. So that is, is a near guarantee. And then for Ben and Jerry's, um, it's their uh, basically their re-up grant. So they already approved us once and then this is a, a much easier process. Uh, and the person in the Ben and Jerry's Foundation said Jerry is the one who signs off on them at the end of the day, and they call him rubber stamp Jerry for these. So we're feeling good. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, the next slide is, yep, there it is, how to donate. Uh, this is our donation information. I really just want to point out that our mailing address has changed. Um, so our mailing address is now, as you see at the bottom, 1715 Ellsworth Street. Um, that, that's because I moved. Uh, so that, that's the only reason there. <laughs> um, we appreciate donations to the C3 and to the C4. Uh, if, if it does not matter to you, please do give to the C4. Um, there's always more coming in the C3 and, and with the C4 money, we can spend that on more things like lobbying and um, and then, uh, I'll give you one more purchase that we might make to encourage donations here. Uh, one of our action plans that we were just plotting out yesterday, who knows if we're going to do this, but it only costs like $400 to rent one of those airplanes to pull a banner advertisement message along. 
And Senate President Jay Corman has the uh, Jay Corman annual golf outing and fundraisers coming up next month. And we just want to fly one of those things around the golf course while they're out there. And then we'll have a group of our people in between two of the holes, you know, making a stink. Um, but, you know, yeah, so C4 money can go to that. C3 money can't. <laughs> so. um, yeah, that, that's all. Uh, any, any questions or just how, how are you all doing? How, you yeah. know. I don't have any major questions about what you're doing. Um, I'm in Pittsburgh and we are in the middle of a massive thunderstorm. So I really would rather prefer to shut my computer down before it gets turned off against my will. Um, so anyways, keep doing what you're doing. Sounds good. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, good to see you and yeah, stay safe. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank you, Michael. Same. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. To, yeah. We'll con of course, we look forward to continuing to support it. Thank you Great so job. much. For your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And Craig, if you're still there, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And I think let's stop the recording. <laughs>